In the real estate industry, there is a secret language, as I like to call it. There are a lot of new terms you will learn when you go to sell your house. This video is the third in a series that I call the secret language of real estate, the secret language of selling your house, specifically the secret language of being under contract to sell your house. So I hope that you'll go back and watch video one, which is the secret language of preparing your house for sale. Video two, the secret language of being on the market. And video three, which is this one, the secret language of being under contract when you are selling your house. That is what we're going to talk about today and we're starting right now. I'm Sherri Ann Green with Coldwell Banker. Welcome to my YouTube channel that guides home sellers and home buyers in Washington, D.C. and Northern Virginia. So you are selling your house, you've gone through the prep, you've learned the secret language of that, you've gone through being on the market, and you've gone through the secret language of what that means, and now you have an offer. You have a contract to sell your house, and there's a whole series of new words you need to know there too. The secret language of being under contract to sell your house. That's what we're going to talk about today. Let's start at the top with the EMD. It is typically the first thing that happens once you've ratified that contract. Maybe I should back up and say, what is a ratified contract? A ratified contract is when the buyer and the seller agree to all terms of an offer, sign it, and it becomes a ratified contract. So you've got the ratified contract. What happens next? Typically, the buyer has to deposit the EMD, and that is the earnest money deposit, and that is the good faith deposit they put down in cash to the title company that says, I will follow this contract to the letter, and if I don't, you may have my EMD. If they are in breach of contract, they are in jeopardy of losing that EMD. A larger EMD can look like a stronger commitment to the contract. And a lot of sellers look to that as an indication of not only financial ability to purchase, they have this cash ready to go today, but also the financial seriousness to purchase because there is a large amount of money they could lose if they are in breach. So the EMD is the earnest money deposit. It is the good faith deposit they put down first to say, I want to buy your house and I will follow the terms of this contract. The second secret word that you may need to know about and understand is contingency. So oftentimes contracts are contingent on certain things happening. And those things can be anything from a home inspection to an appraisal to the buyer getting financing. And those are all buyer contingencies. There are also seller contingencies too. You may have to find a home of choice before you will sell this one. And that could be one of your contingencies. Contingencies are periods of the contract that allow one side of the transaction to do some due diligence, to do some work. And if that work doesn't work out, they may get out of the contract. So if a home inspection doesn't go the way the buyer wants to, and you as the seller don't negotiate with them to clean that up, that contingency can allow the buyer to leave the contract. If you have a contingency that you must find a home within 30 days to purchase, or you can't sell this house, and you can't find that house, that is a contingency that allows you as the seller to get out of the contract. So a contingency is a period of time in a contract that allows one party to do some due diligence or research and come up with the right solution to then close that contingency and move forward with the contract. If the contingency cannot be resolved, the party who has the contingency may be able to void the contract. Another piece of that contract is the down payment. The buyer in the contract is going to tell you how much their down payment is. And a lot of sellers look to this as a indication of strength that this buyer can close on the property. And oftentimes that is correct. A lot of people put down 20% and it shows the seller shows you as the seller that this person is committed to buying a house. They've saved money. They have the money to put down a down payment. But you also have to remember that there are great loan products that allow for a smaller down payment. FHA allows for a 3.5% down payment and a VA loan, Veterans Administration loan, allows the veteran to not put down any money. So a down payment is the amount of cash that a buyer will put down 
to purchase your house and they will finance the rest. The next two terms are often used interchangeably and while they're both legal terms that describe ownership of a home, they are not the same thing and that is title and deed. So a title is the outline, the definition of the ownership, who owns the house. And you will hear as we are under contract that the title company is running title, that they are checking title, clearing title. They're basically looking to confirm that the title is yours, that you own this home, you can legally sell it, you have the authority to legally sell all of it or part of it, whatever that title work says. Title is also looking to make sure that there are no liens on the property that need to be cleared up so that title can transfer to someone else quickly and easily. The deed is that physical piece of paper that the buyer will get. You have a deed right now if you own this home and you're going to sell it. That deed gets transferred to the buyer at closing. So title and deed, they go hand in hand, but they are two different things, both related to the ownership of a house or a piece of property. So let's talk about the walkthrough. That's another term that you will hear as you were under contract to sell your house. And the walkthrough is the day that the buyer will come back through the house right before closing. It could be the day of closing, it could be the day before closing, and they will confirm that the house is in the condition in which you two agree to in the contract. So if you've knocked a hole in the wall on the way out or you decided at the last minute to take your dishwasher and the dishwasher was supposed to stay with the house, you could have a problem. So make sure that on that walk through the home is just as the buyer is expecting it per the terms of the contract that the two of you have agreed to. That final walk through will be the last little step in making sure that your house gets sold. And how does this whole home buying and selling process end? It ends at settlement. It can be called closing day or closing. It is the day that the property settles, the day that the property transfers from you as the seller to the buyer who is the new owner. It closes out your ownership of this home. In a way, it opens the chapter for the buyer, right? So it closes it for you and opens this home underneath the name of someone else. So closing day or settlement day is the official day that the home closes and transfers hands from yours to your buyer. Real estate has its own secret language, whether you are selling, as we've talked about today, or whether you are buying. I've created an entire series called The Secret Language of Real Estate. There are three videos related to home selling. You just watched the third. And there are three videos related to home buying. If you're selling, there's a decent chance you are turning around and buying. So make sure you watch all three videos. A lot of the terms overlap, but in each video I speak about them from the perspective of the buyer and or the seller. So the secret language of real estate, I hope you have enjoyed this series. If you are selling your house, there is a lot to know and a lot to do, and my channel is here to help. Watch this video next. I think you will find it informative as you go to sell your house.